Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Yeah. In Thornton the Day, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 are ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's finding it. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. sale this week. Cortina 2000 E completely renovated, lovely example. The 2000 E is my favourite car of that era. It's just like me wearing a big shirt and some flares, isn't it? If that doesn't sum up the 70s, what does? Daimler, the A250. Better than a Jag, then. Beautiful engine. Look at that. Original chalky. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Hey. The little grey Fergie, 1953. I'll tell you what. A day like today, a tractor without a cab on, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Another day at Thornton Le Day. And the phones just keep on ringing. Good afternoon, Matthewsons. Hello, little guy. And there's something nearly everyone wants to know. Afternoon, Matthewsons. Just how much is my car worth? Oh, I can't tell you that. It went it went for almost double the reserve. It did just over 8,000. Is yours a similar thing, is it? It's like the million dollar question, isn't it? You know, you can give a ballpark, can't you? But of course, you can't really truthfully value anything without seeing it, can you? You can't beat seeing it. If you overestimate and it fails to sell, then you're not a nice guy. If you underestimate, it doesn't come to your auction, it doesn't sell. <laughs> so you can't really do right for wrong, can you? Trying to do it off the internet and emails is difficult. Yes, most people. Because they've grown with the car, haven't they? They've had it, it's been a good old bus, a reliable old thing, so on and so forth. They almost become part of the family, don't they? At so many times, something turns up following a, a description over the, over the phone, uh, and it turns up and you think, Where's the one we were just talking about, you know? Today, Derek's mission is to meet a man who is really in two minds whether to sell his much-loved 70s Cortina. I'm going to look at a Cortina. I'm hoping to pick it up, but it's a 2000E. Uh, I don't think it's Arizona Gold, but it, it looks like it. It's the other one, the darker one, like a, like a is it copper bronze, I can't remember. Uh, gone out of my mind. Uh, but it's a 2000E that's in lovely condition. The 2000E is my favourite car of that era. Dave Gibson from Brick is the proud owner of this 1974 beauty. For his dream car, only a full restoration was good enough. I'd always hankered after one. I'd always wanted one when I was a young lad. I just admired the E version. This became available in 2012 on eBay. I put a bid on it. My wife didn't want me to buy it, um, but unfortunately, or fortunately for me, but unfortunately for her, I won the bid and, um, and I ended up with this. It's a lovely car. I enjoy driving it. Uh, it's got no power steering, but hey-ho, they never had in those days, and it's fairly light anyway. They were an executive saloon. It will keep up with today's traffic very well. 
Admittedly, it's not the most economical car in the world. It does about 26, 27 to the gallon. But that's what they were in those days. And uh, yeah, I have enjoyed having it. I really have. Dave faces a dilemma. Should he keep the car for love or cash in his asset? My wife didn't want me to buy it. She now doesn't want me to sell it. So you can't win, can you? <laughs> Cortina was a radical departure from previous incarnations. Cheap to buy, the driving public loved them. It was Ford's Anglo-German concoction with curves and a head-turning appearance. The flagship model was the 2000E. It became a staple of company car fleets. Getting one usually meant you had a promotion and thousands of private buyers were tempted too. The 2000E replaced the 2000 GXL. Inside it was more plush. Outside changes made the ride better and the road more visible. Derek's arrived. It's a bit of a ding in the boot lid there, look. Bit of a shame. I'll go and give him a knock and then we'll just have a quick look inside the car. Hello. David, hello. Nice to see you. Yeah, how do you do? Uh, thanks thanks for coming round. Uh, not at all. Now yeah. you're going to show me around the car, yeah, are you? Yeah, that's right. We'll have yeah, a look, um, it's on the drive for you. Yeah, and he's straight nice. down to business. Yeah, is it copper bronze? It is copper bronze. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Right. Yeah, 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 it is. Just with some <laughs> straight talking. A bit of work on it. Obviously, different guys have put the wings on, haven't they? Yeah, and that's right. Yeah, put the ceiling yeah. in different, yeah. different ways and whatever. Yeah. It really wants to flat and polish, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just a little bit motley, isn't it? It is in uh, in places, yeah. But it's, um, it's a Mark III and it's still here. <laughs> Not wrong with the engine, is there? No, no. Yeah, sounds sweet enough, doesn't it? Axle quiet. Yes, it is, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, by they do suffer on axles, don't they? Yeah, they Diff do, carrier yeah, bearings. Yeah. And... Reserve, but what are you thinking? I don't know. What do you? I, I take advice. So it's whatever you think. Um, whatever you think it's worth. We've done a lot on it. We've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, my wife doesn't want me to sell it at all. Yeah. I think probably eight and a half would be something that we would go for. No, I don't think it'll make it. Um, no. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's a difficult one to value. I personally think it'll start with a seven. Right. In my opinion, it, it, it will achieve more than what it's worth. OK. I'm sorry about that. Yeah? Man. But I've got to be honest. Yeah. And I'd love to be proven wrong. Yeah. I really would. OK. You know, yeah. in many, many cases, it's, uh, I'm proved yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you like. OK. Yeah, anyway, that's fine. There you go. No problem. Is that all right? Thank you. Thanks yeah. for, uh, yeah, for no letting problem. me have a look. Yeah, OK. And, um, yeah. and we'll see how we go. Yeah, OK. Guys that follow that type of stuff, Cortinas, Capris, Escorts, what have you. Boy, they know their stuff. They can tell you if it's got the wrong self-tapper in a slam platform. They, they'll know it, and that's the problem. And they're the people that will pick fault with it. It's just had a big job, as far as I'm concerned. A really big strip down and repaint and what have you, which it obviously needed, but it's... Basically, there's too much sealer around it for me. Only way I can put it, it's a got at Cortina. I didn't know what it was really worth. Now I do, and I'm going to have to have a word with the management to, um, to see where we go from here. <laughs> Who knows where we'll go? At Matthewson's HQ, there's one activity that never ends moving sold cars out and new lots in. Why can't I go out in one of these rather than keep going out in the lorry all the time? Everybody wants results. Everyone wants it now. What was I doing? You were moaning at John about customers. Ah, uh, no, I'm not moaning. But some vehicles depart to their new owners under protest. Might need a battery jump, Paul, here. Yeah, will. If vendors had uh, maybe charge the battery and just put a pint of petrol in, it would be really useful. Some of them forget the, we need go-go fuel, and uh, they will not run without. Derek senses a conspiracy. So they, they know they're going to auction, so they, they run out and they put, just put half a gallon in. 
because it'll just get uh, in and out of the shed. Just put half a gun in. I know, because I've done it myself. My favourite car. I bet she's a 3.4, isn't she? John, what's she say on the back? I bet she does. Go up a bit. 4.2, is it? it? Sounds like a 3.4 to me. Derek, you've got something wrong. Ah, yeah, I'd have sooner rectified it. With enough fuel, at least, to get to the yard, this 1978 Jag has arrived for the next auction. Derek's keen to point to the days of frugal motoring. Used to run one of these every day. Go to London in it uh, twice a week, and one of these. In the days when five pounds of petrol got you from Bedford to London, so you put a fiver in that tank and a fiver in the other tank, knowing full well you're going to get there and back on a fiver. And the reason you've done that is that they've got submersible pumps in them and they're always going wrong. So when the submersible pump went in that one, you could flick straight over to the other and you know you've got some fuel in it. But you bet your life, one day coming home, that pump will pack up. And I'll tell you now, a fortnight later, the other one will pack up. Always the same. Lovely sound car, that. Got another one coming in, I think. Hey, I'll look. I told you. Now, that will have at least a pint of petrol in that car now. I guarantee you that car will not run out until it's been in and out of here twice. Now, if you think I'm mean with petrol, there's the meanest man on the planet. That's Jim Faulkner, an old mate of mine from Pickering. Good old lad. Left hand, the other way. That'll run out of petrol in the morning. Stood there, that car. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's all right. You won't go that further. That'll do. I bought a car, I think, the other day. Eight, seven quid worth of that extra petrol in that tin. He says, don't bother with petrol. Click tin and took tin of petrol. <laughs> I got over that hilltop and she conked. So we had to tell her to pick it. Over a gallon of petrol I put in. And do you know the upsetting thing about it? He brought a can with three quarters of a gallon in and swapped me of the cheapest petrol you could find you in the world. He probably went road. down the supermarket to get it. Tell me it cost seven quid that petrol in that <laughs> yeah. tin. Anyway, I want me tin well, back. Well, you got ripped off. I want me tin back. Petrol tin. Petrol tin, I bought that. And what he don't realise, he owes me a bit of difference between the two. Well, Jim and Derek are debating <laughs> oil prices. What about the one owner, 1968 Daimler? 250 Daimler. 250. Better than a Jag, then. Beautiful engine. About every tenth Mark II on the line, they pulled it off to turn it into a Daimler. So they went down the line, they reckon, and they picked the best body shell, put that into a Daimler. You see more good examples of them around than you do Jags, don't you? No, I'm not going to, because you only just start putting a reserve up. I'm not looking at anything. This is going to cost. Look at that. Original chalky. You know, maybe you should take this out, Dave. It does like want to come out, engine. just in case. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, look, even got the bleed tube in it. One owner of this motor car. I'd buy one of them. Don't the other pinch day. that, leave that cost in me, there. Cost I, wanted, me, I was going to take it out myself. To cost me, I wanted one. <laughs> cost me seven. I should have kept that, really. <laughs> but look at that body, Derry. Yeah. She's like that underneath. Yeah. As we say, Jim, the blind man on a galloping horse will be over the moon about that. <laughs> right, let's get some paperwork done. What was it? 1,500 quid, wasn't it? No doubt. Want a cup of tea, Jim? Yeah. What have you decided? Best bid above three. Three what? <laughs> uh, best bid above three, three grand on it. I think it's a very genuine car. Come from a genuine home. Yeah, and you saw it driven here, didn't you? Saw it you? driven here. I mean, he does look after his vehicle as well, I'll give him that. Rims them full of petrol all the time. So I can't see how we can go far wrong with that, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. <laughs> oh, another satisfied customer, absolutely, yeah. Also just arrived at Thornton the Dale. Straight up, mate, yeah. Are three agricultural gems. They're massive Ferguson tractors. There's a TE20, known as the Little Grey Fergie, a Massey 35, and a more powerful 65. And there's a trailer load of farming implements, too. Paul's as happy as a pig in a mud bath. Proper plate, look. Lovely, aren't they? That was when we used to produce nice things. Harry Ferguson Limited, Coventry. 
British made. Today we are unloading some Ferguson attachments, equipment, uh, this being one of the pieces. Uh, it's a Ferguson lift attachment for uh, a self-jacking system, a spring time drag, a set of discs, a plow, and some sort of a ridger, and uh, various other bits and pieces, really. There's a heap of stuff there, all genuine Ferguson attachments. There's just something about an old tractor, really. And there's definitely something about those who buy them. We're a little bit odd, maybe, for some of us. Farmer Les Smith loves them. Mm. Although he sold much of his treasured 18-piece collection over the years, he's now in the mood to stock up again. So I'm guessing, sir, you know a bit about tractors? I've been about with them all my life. <laughs> I... I've come and been at it, but whether I get it or not, I don't know. That's the trouble, you know. <laughs> You know, Derek, he, uh, he might have a bit more on them than what I want to pay for them, like, you know. There's some oil coming out. Les remembers the days when farming was a bit more straightforward. I'll tell you what, a day like today, a tractor without a cab on, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Aye. You can hear all the bugs, you can hear everything. Time to move on, aren't they, as you say, you know. Tractors and plows, yeah. eh? Yeah. Yeah. No. Paul knows Les and his son-in-law, Eric, well. He wants too much for them. Ah, well, this is the trouble, isn't it? It wouldn't be so bad, but middle of last year, he had a farm sale and sold his whole collection anyway. <laughs> you know, and now he's just buying them all back for more money. <laughs> you know, it's, all, it's all better. <laughs> he's just trying to spend all his money before he curls his toes, aren't you? Well, yeah, I think <laughs> He's doing what I don't inherit it. That's what he's worried about. <laughs> There's a lot of guys he's got doing a diamond that. encrusted coffin ordered. <laughs> and I'll tell them what, I'm going to die when it's a day like today. Mm. Oh, well, as long as it's not today. No, not No, while he's driving me up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all, it's all better. <laughs> we dealt with Les on and off for a few years, yeah. Funny old stick is Les, yeah. Nice, nice guy, yeah. Anyway, I, I let him go because I've got to frighten Eric before I get home. Black <laughs> check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A sunny Saturday, pre-COVID, and it's auction day. Eager punters hoping to bag a bargain converge on Thornton and Dale. Why have you bought this? Well, it's interesting. Thought it was cheap. What are you going to do with it? I don't know, really. Probably go to your shed. Probably stay in there. Jim Faulkner's 1968 V8 Daimler will shortly go under the hammer, which is good news because he's just bought another car. Uh, Austin 12. We've always had these. My granddad used to run them and my dad. Good, strong car. In the office, Sarah's experiencing a high volume of unwanted calls. Phone's ringing. Mm. Good afternoon, Matheson. Yeah. Dave has a high-tech solution. This new system that's coming in, I'm led to believe, has the option of... Well, you can leave a message. What, a telephone answering machine? Mm. We're going to have our own message on. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're on the other line at the moment. But if you'd like to sit down and listen to me talking gently in your ear for five minutes, <laughs> then, you know, just do what you like. No other auction house would have that message. We wouldn't, would they? No, we would be unique with yeah. that. Lot number 17, Daimler 250, V8 250, 1968. I know she looks a bit scruffy, but by she's a solid old bus. Good starting car, I've heard it run myself. In fact, it drove four or five miles to the sound, no problem at all. Start me on it. Whereabouts? Where? Two. We're off. 2002, 24, 26, 28, 2800. Going then, 2008 for the SP 250. 3000 at the back. 3000 pound. I'm selling it. She's going, the bargain. 3000 pound, it's on its way. 3 1. You're out the very back, sir. I've got 3 1 and I'm selling. 3 2. 3 3, 3004, 3 5, right at the very back, I'll see you. 3005, you're out just in front. 3 6, back in and away and selling. 3007, shaking his head, thanks for letting me know. 3700, last time looking around, all done and away and gone. 
37, thank you very much. Only 200 quid more than expected. But it's enough to buy Jim a few tanks of fuel for his Austin 12. As for the new owner of the Daimler, Bruce Parker, he's had a good day. He's also been splashing the cash on some very nice design luggage. I bought this to fit on a 1927 Austin 16. I think I paid £155 for it. Yeah, big money, but I'm happy. expect the unexpected to arrive at Matthewson's. Like this miniature earth mover. It's the handiwork of Jeremy Spillane, who's built it from scratch. It's an electric powered bulldozer. It's based on a caterpillar, uh, but anyone can drive it from three years old up to adult. Electric motors, rechargeable batteries, working lights front and back. Electric hydraulics spread it down under gravity. Got metal tracks. It is a toy, but the inspiration is in the 1940s and 50s. There were pedal powered toy bulldozers in America. That was my inspiration. I wanted to build a modern equivalent, pedal powered, but I wanted an adult to be able to drive it. So it's slightly bigger than the American toy ones, and uh, it's very good fun. There's a thousand pound reserve on this Diddy dozer, but it costs two and a half thousand to build. I've always loved excavators since I was a kid. Jeremy's selling it to raise cash to help with a house move. For someone that's got everything and uh, they've got a child or grandchild they want to spoil, this could be the, uh, the absolute ultimate thing to have. I've got some plastic rocks, so you can push them around on tarmac or grass or whatever but it doesn't have the power to push real stuff. I've got my fingers crossed that, you know, other people can see the attraction, not just me. In the showroom, Paul's admiring the full-size tractors. Groundbreaking in more ways than one. Here we go. Three-point linkage uh, is, is the means of lifting and lowering and attaching different machines. It was just one of Harry Ferguson's many genius inventions. He was also a pioneer in Formula One and aviation. Basically, you've got two main lifting arms down the bottom, lift off of these, one at either side, uh, and one stay, for want of a better word. Um, so there's your three points, one, two, and three. Uh, and th these are just uh, fitted on for anti-sway uh, and to help carry it still used today, even on the big machinery. This changed commercial farming forever, this principle. Today, these three will go under the hammer. Car washing lead and head of tractors, Geoffrey Bubbles, weighs up the prices. The Grey Fergie, the nice days will run well, 2000-ish. Uh, these are very popular, it could make four grand. The 65, which is quite scarce, there's not a lot about, it could make 5,000. This could have a terrible effect on farmer Les Smith's bank balance, and more specifically, his family's inheritance. Son-in-law Eric, here to keep him in check. The little grey Fergie, 1953, super little machine, seen it up there, where's my tractor men? There he is, both of them down there. Start me on it, where are we going to be? 1,002, 1,002, 1,004, 1,400 pound, 14, 15, 16, 17, right at the very, very back. 1750, 18, selling it provisional. Are you all done? 1800, provisional 1800, thanks, chaps. The aptly named Robert Field, the lucky winner. Are we going to take it home and try and use it? We have a, a small holding of a few horses and sheep, so it'll be put to gentle use. One down, two to go. Les is still being monitored. 
Um, no, Massey Bergson, now we've got the um, 35. It's the one they all want. Everybody wants this one. Lot number 120, start me on it. Where are we going to be? Come on, where? Three, gotcha. Three, two, four, six, three, eight. 3,008, everybody wants this one. 3,008, worth a lot more as we know. 3,008, here bidding. 3,008, 4,000. 4,000 on the right. Out the back, 4,000 here. 4,000 on the right. Provisional 4,000. John Walker from Malton nabs the 35 at a grand below reserve. Just the one tractor remains, the Massey Ferguson 65. If Les is going to blow the cash, now's his chance. Right, here we are, 1960, here she is, the one we've been waiting for, this is the one, obviously. Start me on it, we're going to be with it, where? Three again, 3,000 pound, yep, three, three, two, three, two, three, four, three, six, going then, 3,600, three, eight. 3,800, 4,000, 4,002, 4,200, you're out now, sir, 4,4. 4,004, are you all done? 4,400, are you sure? 4,4, four, 4,4. Four. Les misses out to the relief of his son-in-law, Eric. The tractor reserve wasn't met, but highest bidder, Pete Wilson, and his son, Ewan, know the owner, so he goes for 4,400. We've got a little grey Fergie, we have a little mini Nuffield, and we have a Ford 3930. Add to the collection of tractors. I haven't got a red one. So we thought we'd best have a red one. My granddad always said it's only money. Spring 2020. A virus has arrived. Time for everyone to take it a bit easier and enjoy some of that Yorkshire tranquility. <laughs> Maybe not. The wheels of industry are still turning. You all right? Yeah. It's part of a precision grand plan. Somewhere there. Paul, are you pulling the office? Bits. Oh, I am, I am. Yes. Derek, you're still trying to work and Paul's knocking the office to bits. Well, you can't stop for that, mate, can it? Hey, if he wants to play out there, I'll play in here. Don't bother me, not. Hey, it, uh, as long as you don't make too much noise. Exactly what that plan is, is anyone's guess. You don't mind a bit of DIY then, Jack? I enjoy it. Do yeah. you? I don't know what I'm doing, but I enjoy it. <laughs> Since lockdown, really, since this dreaded lurgy came about, the girls wouldn't come back to work down here because we only have a shoebox for an office. So we, we moved the office up to Pickering, the satellite site, which has got a lovely big spacious office, but it's hard work. You're ringing to and fro in all the time and it's just a bit of a carry on, really. So, uh, so we decided best thing to do was uh, make the offices bigger here. Uh, and, uh, and then the girls, the paperwork, the everything can all come back down here. We're fairly confident there's a very big building. When you say fairly, we'll see you in a minute. <laughs> and uh, is it possible to have a look at the blueprints for this? Um, mm. With the remodelling in full swing, Derek will have to face one of his biggest fears. An online future. To cap it all, we're only having gas central heater, gas boiler put in. How about that? Have you heard that? Dragging me, screaming and kicking into the 21st century. Uh, but having said that, what they don't know, of course, is I'll turn it right down. It, it will only be lukewarm. That's all they need. What do you think, Mark? It'll be nice when it's finished. Over at the Pickering site, Dave's now got a chance to spend some quality time with the renovated 1974 Cortina 2000E. Its seven grand reserve hasn't just been picked out of a hat. If you put the price up too high, you tend to automatically wipe out a percentage of of your customer because they look at it and think, no. But then if you if you if you're sensibly priced, they look at it and think, 
oh, that's worth a look. And if you get one or two or three that all think, hmm, it's all right, that, then, you know, it goes boom, 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 doesn't it? So before we know where you're at, it doesn't stop at 7-7, seven, seven, it stops at 8-4. As a very young kid, I used to drive one of these, a metallic blue one, with the seat right forward. <laughs> yeah. It's just like me wearing a big shirt and some flares, isn't it? It's there, isn't it? There it is, you know. So, um, yeah, that interior, you know, the old velour interior there, the vinyl roof and, and gold metallic paint. I mean, if that doesn't sum up the 70s, what, what does? Overhead cam. I can remember as a kid, when they wanted cam belt changes. There you go, simple as. <laughs> you can do it in your lunch hour. You know, compared to a cam belt now on a modern motor, which takes, yeah, three quarters of a day, you know, and ends up with all the cars spread around everywhere. That is just a dream, isn't it? It's just a dream. So simple. Hello, Matthewson. In the office, they're getting ready for the next auction. God, right. Everyone's trying to get their heads around a new way of working. Yeah, we've got a lot to get through. This particular 2020 auction is closed to the public. Bidding is being done by phone or online. We've got a new system in place. We're hoping the system's in place anyway, <laughs> uh, where they can bid online. It's 20 years old, isn't it? Sit at your computer, in your underpants. I think it's the way forward. None of us really like change too much, do we? We like our own routines, don't we? It's smart, it's tidy, but ripply along the sills. We like it here because there's a separate ladies' toilet which we can go into and know that it's going to be clean every time we enter it. Even I've started using it, it's far better. <laughs> You can see already that some of the vehicles have got some nice juicy bids on them. <laughs> and then let me know, sort of by about five -ish. And amongst them is the 1974 Ford Cortina 2000E. All eyes in the office are on virtual Derrick. Another close out, let's hope that we... We're not on? Oh. Doing his very best to address the nation. Derrick Online, yeah. It's a little bit of a problem. It doesn't really do technology, does he? Lovely condition all round, lots of interest this week. Want some beating for the money. Bits for the Cortina are sweet. Seven, five, eight, eight thousand pound. Pushing it way past the seven grand reserve. Ten thousand, eleven thousand pound, eleven five, eleven five, eleven six, there you go. Eleven six, eleven seven, sir. I'll do it. Eleven seven. Are you sure you're done? Eleven seven. Thank you. The Cortina sells for nearly five grand above reserve. Did amazingly well. We knew it was going to, and then it did eleven thousand seven hundred on the day. So it shows that people are still wanting a classic car, regardless of the pandemic. I will be sorry to see it go. Walk past it every day and have a little, we have a little chit chat, a little bit of a flirt, you know. What does it say to you? Hey. All right then. How are you doing? Three or four thousand quid more than we thought, and a couple of thousand more than uh, the vendor thought. They don't come up every five minutes, do they? They're not on every street corner. Few and far between, and if you want one, then it's the way it is, isn't it? Sort of supply and demand. The Cortina has a bit of a journey ahead before it meets up with its new owner. Sarah has provided comprehensive directions. It's off to Scotland Shire. Up north. Whitby, North Yorkshire. The massive Ferguson 65's new home. On Pete and Ewan Wilson's small holding is the latest addition to their growing tractor collection. So I'm online and Ewan being Ewan, you know, likes his old retro stuff and that, so he was keen to have a look around at Matthewson. So we said, go on, right, we'll go. We've got a couple of little tractors, so it was like, obviously, we thought we'll have something a little bit larger engine-wise and just a bit bigger tractor, really. You know, I'll tell it to come off a farm if it's mended with bale of band, can't you, mate? You can. We got drawn into the bidding and he was kicking me foot, like, go on, go on, go on, go on. So, right, we jumped in and, yeah, and then that was it. They knocked the hammer down and it was sold. Yeah, the rest was history, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Pete's wife has been here before. The bidding started and the phone rang. So I passed my phone to Ewan and Ewan answered it and she asked, well, where's your dad? Oh, he's buying a tractor. Well, she knows he's not one for pulling her leg. So we came home and she was like, oh, you haven't, have you? And I just showed her invoice and she was like, oh, you have. <laughs> she only wanted to know what he wanted for tea. Yeah. <laughs> What did he have for tea? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't think I did. Yeah, I think the dinner was in the dog. <laughs> Many fingers. With the deal done, it meant Sonny Ewan could continue his love of stuff that's been around the block. Absolutely love old school stuff. As a little lad, you go sit on all the tractors and mess about and play, and then before I knew it, we'd have been and got on, hadn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I blame him, really. He <laughs> egged me on. Who <laughs> 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 like, for his first car, you know, we looked at, like, some new modern cars for him. He's not interested, he just wanted something old. We bought an old Nova SR, what he wants to do up. A sea ridge car, you're for real, but... Yeah? He loves all these old tractors, and you get, like, a new modern one with a cab on, and... Nah, not bothered, are you? No. Nah, you like old stuff, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, they're just good fun, aren't they? They're easy to work, just not, not to look at. We, we do try and take one or two to a show now and again when we get a chance. So we've both got one each now, because every time there's a road run comes on, it's uh, who's going to do it and who's going to follow behind in a car. It's simple to drive, there's nothing really too difficult about it, but the feel of the pedals and the steering and all that, there's nothing like a, a car or today. You feel like you're going quicker than you are. No one was taking the time to do them. They'd just end up wasting away, you know, sat under edges and sat in barns, just rusting away, like. If no one did, then they'd be none left, would they? So, um, yeah, I think it's good to keep them going, isn't it? Keep a few more. As for that other piece of rare utilitarian machinery, the miniature bulldozer, it too had its day at a pre-COVID auction. A uh, caterpillar, a tractor, now this is fantastic. This is the toy for all toys. I was doing it this morning, it's great. But will it make the earth move? We've got a commission bid here. Um, if you've turned up, don't bid against yourself. Start me wherever you want to be. Come on, where? Thousand pound? No, thousand pound, thousand pound. Where's going to bid a thousand? Five hundred then, five hundred. Five hundred pound, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thousand, eleven hundred. 1,200, and that's the way to do it, 1,200 pounds. Are you out, W? 1,200 pounds, standing, 1,200 pounds, going. You're all done, 1,200 pounds, a bargain. Fabulous bit of kit, 1,200 pounds. Well done. The new owner is David Swindon from Chesterfield. Well, I'm just into quirky and stuff, to be truthful with you, and I hope that comes up like that. I just buy it just for the sake of buying it, but hopefully granddaughter will like it. I don't think my daughter will like it, she's 18, so I don't think she's going to be going on it like but. Uh, my granddaughter will definitely love it. Good to pay for it now, sir? Yeah, yeah. We've got all sorts of stuff like that, but out like this, I just fancy out like this, you know what I mean? Especially that somebody's made anyway, like, you know what I mean? Reasonable money, yeah. I don't want my missus to know how much I've paid for it. <laughs> she, she knows I've come to look at a few things, but I always come back with something. There you go, David. Cheers, don't thank you. Um, it's outside door. I might need somebody to give me a bit of an hand. I'll bring the Jeep round and uh, bring it. Cheers, don't thank you. Taking a bulldozer home would normally be a logistical headache. This one's a bit more straightforward. Get your boulders! <laughs> One uh, yeah. plastic boulders to go with it. Chuck them off, chuck them off back to the seat, Paul, because it's going to rain. Nothing unusual going on here. Just another customer with a new toy to play with. Coddy in Fife. David Lumsden is no stranger to Fords, and Mark III 2000Es in particular. Definitely a Ford man. I had three Fords. I had a Ford, a 1300L. I had a 1600XL. Then the piece de resistance was a 2-litre GXL, which was, a, you were the cock of the north wing if you had one of them. I'm cock of the north because I've got a 2000E. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful car. The colour, especially the interior, I like the black interior. The seats are 
perfect. The back seats are, are nice. The door curtains. Somebody's put a lot of work in to in them. Beautiful car, well looked after. Credit to the previous owner, there's not really an awful lot to do. Slight stone chips here and there, which is nothing. There's a slight wee dent, but I mean, that'll pull out. That's no, 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 no big deal, eh? And apart from that, you could see, well, the chrome's slightly pitted, but I mean, it's 47, 48 year old. What do you expect? So, uh, aye, but there's not really much to do apart from polish it and keep it clean and keep the rust away and things like that, and that's what I'll do. David likes 2000 E so much, he's got another one in the garage. This is my other one, my other 2000 E, uh, in the same colour. <laughs> I really like them. But I didn't go out to get the same colour, it just happened that that one was a very nice car and it happened to be the same colour. So now I've got two. This is a 1975, it's a, a year newer than the other one. Uh, this is the three speed automatic gearbox. Uh, the other one is a 1974 and that's got a five speed gearbox. So that's basically the, the only difference there is with them. The typical 70s seat covers, as you can see. Oh, I'm, oh, it's missing is the furry dice to match, but there you go. Lovely seat covers. <laughs> it looks apart with the seat covers. <laughs> so it's fair to say you are a Cortina fan. Well, as you could see, definitely. Definitely. You can't uh, dispute that, I don't think. <laughs> nice engine, nice sound. No knocks, no rattling. Just a beautiful car. Lovely. It's, it drives smooth. It's just a nice car to drive. And you get the thumbs up as you're going along and brilliant. It's history. And it's fast disappearing because there's few of them. If you're getting people that are, are prepared to look after them and sure drive them because they're cars that you want to drive, enjoy them. If I go shopping, I didn't go to the bottom shop, I go to a shop maybe 10 miles. <laughs> Just so I could drive it, because that's why it's fun. I get young ones and they're saying, what's that? You can't, they didn't care what it is. And they say, it's a, it's a cracking car you've got. It's a car to be enjoyed and I'm going to enjoy it. And as simple as that. I can only drive one at a time, unfortunately. <laughs>